Hey guys, Comet here. Welcome to episode 14 in my Overly Scienced series. In the last episode, I built this polluted water evaporator over here to make clay so that I would have enough ceramic to build a second duplicate housing unit. One of its byproducts is, well, a ton of oxygen. And so I hooked up these pumps here to prioritize the oxygen that's on the map before I have the electrolyzers consume some water. So if you notice here, these are no longer working. All of the oxygen is being provided by these gas pumps up here. Now I also put in these two steam vent tamers and there's a slight problem with some of the math I did in the previous episode. It assumes an arbitrarily large heat battery, which is technically possible to create, but I, I don't have one here. So what ends up happening is this steam room gets above 200 degrees and some of this heat is then wasted by the steam turbine. So instead of setting this to 25 degrees, I've found that 50 degrees is a pretty good sweet spot. Same with the one down here. So now onto what I promised in the last episode. Through the power of editing, I present to you the second DHU. I've rerouted this transit tube over the top so that they can still get into here. I have jumping joyas in these pots instead of mirth leaves because I don't have any more mirth leaves and I still need a couple more joyas for these. Mima hasn't gotten around to sculpting these blocks yet but now I can start taking on more duplicates because I have space to fit them and when you are taking on a lot of duplicates you have to start worrying about how they're going to impact your frame rate. The more duplicates you have the more pathing options the game has to calculate so by restricting the number of locations your duplicates can path to, you can increase frame rate. And while I'm on this subject, I have turned these back on because I need to make an enormous amount of plastic to start blocking up the entire map because tiles, solid tiles, impact frame rate the least. A vacuum is still considered a gas I could open up the whole map and just let all of the gases escape, but a vacuum is actually worse than a tile. So if you just block in the whole map, then the game doesn't have to calculate gas pressures in that tile because a block stays at constant mass the whole time. So if you're starting to see FPS impacts because you're taking on a lot of dupes, uh, you can try blocking up the whole map. Or if you have a lot of scaffolding like I do, you can just remove some of that scaffolding. The next thing I want to work on is an arbor tree farm for ethanol. So if we look over here in the plant section, the arbor tree takes polluted water and dirt, and it will give you lumber. You can then use that lumber in a refinery right here, an ethanol distillery. You can convert lumber into ethanol. And you get a lot of polluted dirt, which you can then run through a compost to get clean dirt. You can then use the clean dirt to fertilize the trees, which you used to make the polluted dirt in the ethanol distillery. So you have a closed loop there that is dirt positive. Then the polluted water that comes out of a petroleum generator can be used to fertilize the trees the trees then give you ethanol. You burn the ethanol in a petroleum generator and run the water back into the trees. So with all of that, I have to figure out all of the ratios I need to build everything in. And I think the best way to do that is in Excel. So I have Excel open now and I'm gonna start figuring out some of the ratios. So let's look at the trees. They require 10 dirt or 10 kilograms of dirt per cycle and 70 kilograms of polluted water per cycle. So the trees are going to take 10 kilograms of dirt and 70 kilograms of polluted water. They will then produce lumber so the wiki here says that a domestic arbor tree can produce a maximum of 333 kilograms of lumber per cycle. So back in Excel, this number should be 333.3. And it's going to be positive. The next stage is the distiller. If we look at the numbers on the distiller, 
It takes 1,000 grams per second and outputs 500 grams per second of ethanol. So we have to convert all of that to kilograms per cycle. So let me get a calculator here. So it makes 1,000. It takes 1,000 grams per second. So we can divide this by 1,000. That gives us, well, kilograms. That's simple. So one kilogram per second, and there's 600 seconds in a cycle. So times 600. So that's 600 kilograms per cycle. 600. And that is a negative number because it's consuming it. It doesn't make any polluted water, so we'll put an NA. Sorry, this should be under lumber. There we go. It doesn't consume any dirt, so that will be NA. And then it outputs carbon dioxide. So CO2. Let's see, how much of that does it make? 166.67 grams per second. So I'll convert that to kilograms per cycle. We get 100.002, so I'll just keep that as 100. So it's going to produce 100. A tree is Na on carbon dioxide. It produces 500 grams per second of ethanol, which is 300 kilograms per cycle. And the last thing it creates is polluted dirt at 333.33 grams per second, which works out to be about 200 grams or 200 kilograms per cycle. The next stage is the petroleum generator. Now, the petroleum generator consumes 2,000 grams per second of a combustible liquid, so in this case it would be the ethanol, and that works out to be 1,200 kilograms per cycle. It will produce 500 grams per second of carbon dioxide, which is 300 kilograms per cycle. It will make 750 grams per second of polluted water, which works out to be 450 kilograms per cycle. It won't make any lumber, so that's an Na, and it won't make any polluted dirt, so that's an Na. Next step is the composts. So the composts take in 100 grams per second of polluted dirt, and it gives off 100 grams per second of clean dirt. Well, as clean as dirt can be. And that works out to 60 kilograms per cycle. Now that we have all this information, we can start figuring out the ratios. I'm going to create a net column over here to help us figure out how many of each we need. So if we take this whole thing and paste it here, we can start offsetting these by constant numbers. Actually, I'm going to take this and move it over to right here. So this isn't going to be negative 10, but it is going to equal this times the constant number we have over here. The constants shouldn't be here. That makes no sense. They should rather be up here. So I'm going to take this, cut it again, and paste it here. And that screws up all of the other stuff. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. Now I got everything set up. Except for the net. So now I have all of the formulas set up. Now what we need to do is change these constants until all of this comes to zero. Or as close to a zero as we can get it. So the equation in here, I'm just taking all of these cells and summing them. And then this one is the original factor for each type times the constant. So let's say we have 16 trees to 20 distilleries. The lumber is net negative, so we have too many distilleries. It looks like 18 to 10 is the optimal ratio here. So now we need to fully consume all of its ethanol in the generator here. So that would be 2.5 generators fully consumes all of the ethanol. We have a net of zero now. So if we double all of these, if we do 20 distilleries to 36 trees, not, not 136, 36 trees, and we set this to 5, we should now see that this is back at zero, and we are making, or we are consuming one extra piece of lumber per cycle, which is basically irrelevant. Next, we have the compost. This one's pretty simple because it's one to one, so we'll need six composts. 
if we only want to be supplying the trees with dirt from the polluted dirt, we can then feed the surplus polluted dirt to poke shells. So next we need to figure out what to do with all of this carbon dioxide. So that's where the carbon skimmer comes in. It makes zero dirt. It outputs 1,000 grams per second of polluted water. It takes in 1,000 grams per second of water and also consumes 300 grams per second of carbon dioxide. So when we put all of those numbers in over here, we end up with 600 kilograms per cycle of polluted water that it will output. It will consume 180 kilograms per cycle of carbon dioxide and it will consume 600 kilograms per cycle of water. So to fully consume all of the carbon dioxide, we are going to need 20 carbon skimmers. And that will leave us with a net negative 100 kilograms per cycle of carbon dioxide. Which means it is slightly overbuilt, but if I change this to instead be 19, we end up with a positive amount. So I'll leave that at 20. And we can see the total expected results for this. We're going to need to supply it with 270 kilograms per cycle of polluted water and 12,000 kilograms per cycle of clean water. And then we can feed 3,600 kilograms of polluted dirt to poke shells. All right, now that everything has been theory crafted, we have to go in and actually build it. So I'm thinking the best spot for it is going to be either over in this area or right in this area because I have to remember that I'm going to use this area down here and this area over here for sour gas boilers, one for the left side and one for the right side. This space might not be wide enough between this saltwater geyser and the wall over here. Let's see, the ratio says that we need 36 trees. So to fit 36 trees, we could do two layers of 18 and the trees require a hydroponic farm and they need one free space on each side. So I could put one here and then skip to put another one. So one tree takes up a total of three tiles. And if I have 18 per floor, 18 times three is 54. So I wanna leave one tile for the wall, one tile for a ladder, and then, then I can put in the trees. So it would be 54 plus then the two extra tiles on the right side. So I'd have to come out 56. So I could put it underneath this saltwater geyser or above it. I think underneath it because this will be in the way if I put it above it. That means I'll have to rip out this, but it's already pressurized the whole map to 5.8 kilos. So I mean, it's pretty unnecessary now. So let me start figuring out the spacing here. It's going to be this wide. That leaves space for a ladder on the left side and a ladder on the right side. And then 54 tiles in the middle. The only thing I haven't calculated out yet is all of the necessary cooling. So we look at a petroleum generator. It produces 20 kilodTUs per second of heat. We're gonna have five of them. So that's 100 kilodTUs of heat from the petroleum generators. Plus then the 4.5 kilodTUs times 20 distilleries. So 20 times 4.5 plus the 100. So we're gonna have to delete almost 200 kilodTUs of heat per second. If you remember back to this website, one steam turbine can remove this many DTUs of heat per second. So in theory, one steam turbine should be able to keep up with all of the heat production inside this box. Ooh, actually something I just realized, I can use the ladder space as part of the tree space here. So I can bring this whole thing in two blocks. So this is what the tree section will look like here. I don't want to put in the trees quite yet, because even though they don't have polluted water, they will still require dirt for fertilization, but they won't produce any lumber. So they'll just be consuming my dirt without producing anything. So once I get all of this connected up to polluted water, then I'll go ahead and put the trees in. So the next stage, once the trees make the lumber, the lumber will be processed by an ethanol distillery. I have 52 tiles to work with, and I wanna make this as symmetrical as possible. 
Well, actually, I can split the problem in half, because I just want five on each side, right? So that gives me 26 tiles to figure out how to fit five distilleries. So it's going to be a gap of one in between everything, except for the very center. That will have a gap of two. So something like that. That'll be the first half. And then down here will be the second half. This layer will be where I put in the 20 carbon skimmers. And every five skimmers is going to require a water sieve. That way I can recycle some of the water. Because I don't think I have enough water production on the map to just keep, keep supplying this with clean water. I can just turn the polluted water that the carbon skimmers make back into clean water in the same location. So this wa side's water sieves will go here. And then this side's water sieves will go over here. Now hopefully I can fit 20 of these in here. I could only fit 18. But what I think I can do, maybe squeeze some up in here, depending on how the plumbing goes. Because trying to figure out how to plumb all of this is going to be a nightmare. There's so many inlets and outlets I have to worry about. Now this layer here is going to be for the generators. And I know the ratio says I only need five, but I'm going to put in six with some batteries. Because this whole thing is technically power positive. But because there's such wide power swings, I'm going to need some batteries and some reservoirs to hold some of this extra ethanol. So it's essentially going to function like this system over here functioned, where I have a reservoir. If the reservoir is full, I will burn off some of the fuel in the reservoir, and if the battery gets too low, then they will turn on and consume whatever fuel is in there. So if I do something like this, where we store up about four reservoirs full of ethanol, I can then put in some batteries, and this whole thing should be its own isolated unit. Power is pretty simple, I'm just going to string everything together using a heavy watt conductive wire. Now on to some of the plumbing. So let's see here. I can fit some plumbing here, like that. I can hit these ten carbon skimmers, and then run the polluted water back over here. And then for these carbon skimmers, they'll have to join in with these two up here for the rest of the 10. So if the polluted water is going back this way, then getting clean water up to there might be a little difficult. What I can do is go up to here, bridge over, run into there, and then into there. Actually, it might be better if I go like this because then these can join up in the middle here, go onto a bridge, and then down into there. So it's not the cleanest pipe work, but it'll work. So now I have to remember that these are gonna have pipes here, as well as pipes here. So to run the cooling loop would look something like this. I've been thinking about this mess right here and I've come to the conclusion that it would be cleaner if I put these two carbon skimmers in with these over here. So it would instead look something more like this. So here I'm going to use a bridge so that it will actually combine the two together. And then I'm going to use a similar strategy right here so that the polluted water coming out of this carbon skimmer can join up with the water coming out of this carbon skimmer, right in this tile right here. Otherwise, this carbon skimmer's water will plug up the output of this carbon skimmer, and this carbon skimmer won't work. So this looks a lot cleaner now, at least in my opinion. The last component to this is the composts, which are under the refinement tab. Now, these petroleum generators are going to output polluted water, which is going to collect down here at the bottom, so I'm going to put in a layer of mesh tiles, stick a pump right in the center here, and then place the compost on both sides of the pump. Now, I calculated that I would need six, but I'm going to put two extra just to take care of anything else that might happen on the map. So the ethanol that comes out of these distilleries will come out this way, down here, across here, and then it will pool in these reservoirs. I'm going to use the same bridge trick here so that it doesn't plug the next distillery in the sequence. 
So I've got everything connected up now. I've put in this transit tube access point here. All of the plumbing is in place. That's a nightmare to look at, but that's as clean as I can make it. So the insulated piping here is the path for the ethanol. The white pipe, or the regular pipe, is where the water and polluted water will go back and forth between the carbon skimmers and water sieves. And then the radiant pipe is the cooling loop. Now any polluted water that these petroleum generators produce will be put right back into the trees up here. The last thing I need to do is put in a steam turbine room up on the top here like I did over here. And I'm gonna just basically copy this exact one even though I only need theoretically one aqua tuner. I'm gonna put in two aqua tuners and two steam turbines just for redundancy's sake and because it, well, makes it symmetrical and I like my symmetry. While I wait for the steel to be built, what I can do is put in the walls and then the steam turbines will go here and here. Now these two protrusions here will be for the power transformers, which will power the aqua tuners underneath. The temperature shift plates can go in. And then the drywall goes around them. So here is aqua tuner number one, and here is aqua tuner number two. Now this loop is going to be a little bit different than what I normally do. It's going to have a double bypass option. So what that means is the cooling loop will come down this way. This will be bypass number one, and then it's gonna come up here. Its temperature is gonna be checked again, and if it's still too warm, then this aqua tuner will cool it off. And then it will come up here, uh, do something kind of like this. Now the tricky part is going to be getting the exhaust down into that room. Put a bridge here. And I actually need to flip this turbine. So I can put the bridge in here now. I'll connect that turbine up to there and this turbine up to there. Then the exhaust will just come straight down into the two corners. For power, they will just plug into these wires here, which are hidden in the floor. Liquid pipe thermosensors go here and here. The automation, I will connect up like normal. Now if we go to the tree here, we can see that it has a temperature range of 15 to 40 degrees Celsius. A single aqua tuner can change the liquid that's running through it by 14 degrees. So we don't want the output coolant to ever be below 15. Otherwise it will stifle the trees and break the whole system. So if we take 15 plus 14, we only want the aqua tuners to turn on if the liquid is ever above 29 degrees. So I will set this to 29. I will have this one come on if it is ever above this 29 plus another 14. So we can just round that to 45. The next step would be to create a vacuum in here, and that can be done with a little trick like this. Powering this pump, I think I'm just going to connect it up to there for now, and that means I need all of this up here to get power. So we can plug in right here. I'm not going to bother vacuuming all of the oxygen out of this room. I'm just going to let the carbon dioxide settle in the bottom and force all of the oxygen out up here through this hole. Now, I don't actually have enough super coolant to fill this entire loop. So what I'm going to do for now is just fill it with water. And then once I accumulate enough super coolant, I can switch it over. But well, that reminds me, I do need to put in the buffer here then. And since I have two aqua tuners, I'm going to need a double buffer. So one can go here, and then the next one can go here. And then I will snip that and that. I think this is a good fill point right here. I can pull from the main line right there. Now that this is a vacuum, I can go ahead and block this off. So once this whole room gets down to about 40 degrees, I'll go ahead and plant the trees and then plug in the polluted water that is going into these thimble reeds here. So this should start to cool all of this off now. I'm still contemplating putting in temperature shift plates because this is all going to be carbon dioxide. I might want something to speed up heat transfer. I'll see how it works without the shift plates. If it's sufficient, then I won't bother putting them in. It has just dropped to 40 degrees in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and plant the trees now.
the trees on the very edge right here are blocked by the ladder. And I don't really feel like rearranging this entire thing. So we're just going to be off ratioed the whole time. I don't know why I overlooked that. I think it was because I was looking up here and I didn't see the ladder. The more I think about this problem, the more I'm just disappointed. I think I'm gonna break down and move the whole thing over. Oh, that's gonna suck. So I got everything moved over now. All of the trees are working. I have put super coolant in the cooling loop here. I redid the plumbing here. And overall, it's working like it's supposed to. All I have to do is keep feeding it with polluted water here. It will supply itself with dirt because of these down here. And I don't actually have it connected up to power. It's running off of its own power. And we're accumulating a lot of ethanol. I'm thinking I'll put these steam turbines and aqua tuners onto the same power grid down here. If you notice, it's actually on the main power grid here. It connects in right here. So what I can do is run this up here to there to see if I can get everything to work off of just the power provided by these generators. Because you have to remember these transit tube access points are also powered by these batteries. And so they drain some of the power as duplicates come in and out. Now that it's running stably, it seems like only one aqua tuner ever turns on at a time. So I think I'm going to redo this section in here. There's no point in having 1200 kilograms of steel on an aqua tuner that's never being used. So to do that, if I do the same little trick here where I put maybe some crude oil, because if I put uh, water, this steam will just boil it off. So if I put crude oil, it should keep the steam stuck in there. Oh, and also, if you notice our duplicate count, we're at 32 dupes now. I've been taking on dupes in the background. Okay, I've got this converted over to one aqua tuner. I've removed the two power transformers, and I've put a single one down here in this corner. So it runs a wire up the wall here over to power this. Ah. Okay, it looks like it's auto-saved right before it crashed, at least. I rerouted the wire for the steam turbines down through here now. That way everything is a lot smaller and more self-contained. This aqua tuner just has to catch up now. It's almost got the super coolant down to the appropriate temperature. If my math is correct, it should only take one aqua tuner, unless there's some kind of heat multiplying thing that's going on in here that I'm not aware of. I mean, worst case scenario, it self-regulates, because if these trees stop working, then these ethanol distillers won't have any lumber to run, which means they'll stop making heat, which means the trees can then cool back down, produce lumber, and then these will turn back on. So w what's the whole point of all of this, right? I went to all the trouble to build all of this. I did a bunch of calculations. It's taking in polluted water, but I could solve that problem with just thimble reeds. So the only reason you would want to build one of these is for poke shells. So as poke shells mature, they must periodically shed portions of their exoskeletons to make room for new growth. You can then take their exoskeletons, put them in a rock crusher, and turn it into lime. Lime is then used in the steel recipe. So if you want to make a lot of steel, then you're going to need lime, which means you need poke shells. Now poke shells are a little tricky to ranch because they like to smack anything that walks by them when there's an egg on the ground. So this Dreco right here is injured because of a poke shell. And if you're ranching them, they'll also hit the rancher sometimes. So I've got a really simple poke shell farm here. Once they wrangle up these poke shells and they drop them off in here, I'm going to lock this door so that dupes can't get in and out. This is set to allow manual use. The dupes will drop off polluted dirt. It will go down into this conveyor receptacle. This auto sweeper will grab from the receptacle and put into these critter feeders here. The poke shells will eat the food. 
turn half of the mass into sand, and then this conveyor loader is set to pick up sand and their molts. They will then appear in this receptacle so that the dupes can come over and grab it. So that's the main function of this entire thing here, is just to feed poke shells. Now that I've taken on so many more dupes, I'm starting to notice a major decline in frame rate. So I'm going to, between this episode and the next one, I'm going to try blocking off the entire map with uh, plastic tiles made from the polymer presses down here. And also get some more oxygen production, because... I've just been pulling from the map, and the map is down to about 1.8 kilos. I have turned this back on, and I'm thinking I'll make another one over here to feed this base. Eventually, what I'm going to do is have the oxygen production here, right next to where I'm going to be liquefying them for rocket fuel. But for now, I think right here is a good spot for it. That's about all I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something, and I will see you in the next one.